Hello everyone! Now, don't zap away, you may see a different face, but the markets are still in place and so is the show. We're going to look at uh, stock markets that were up on average 1% uh, over all the major indexes. We're going to look at some bonds and seeing my face, you may know that we will have RRGs as a weapon of choice. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final bar. everyone welcome to today's edition of the final bar as i said you may see a different face dave keller is on holiday well deserved and i was appointed to actually fill his shoes they're quite some big shoes to fill but i'm happy to be able to talk to you again i'm presenting to you from amsterdam in the netherlands my name is julius de campanar and as dave all talks about the weather it was quite crap here today. It's raining and we live on a farm and all the paddocks get muddy. So you don't even want to know. Um, I need to get out of my comfort zone because if you've been watching my show, the Sector Spotlight on every Tuesday, but that my time frame is usually slightly longer term, um, but I'm happy to do it. We're going to go look at some shorter term pictures. We're going to look at what the markets have been doing today. Um, I want to bring in some RRGs, obviously, I'll talk about that. We're going to explain a few things that maybe not everybody understands. Obviously, we're going to look at sectors. If you look at RRGs, you need to look at sectors. And I do need to um, give you guys the rundown of the upcoming events. Um, tomorrow, Dave will also be on holiday and the show will be hosted by Tom Bowley. Chief Strategist at Earnings Beats and very well worth your time, I would say. Um, then it's the weekend, obviously. And then uh, next, well, that's Monday, the 12th. No, that's Tuesday, the 12th. Actually, that's a very important day, Tuesday, the 12th, because that is the 100th episode of Sector Spotlight. So don't forget that. Tune in. And after you've watched Sector Spotlight, go to the final bar and see how Dave is interviewing Ari Wald, the Chief Strategist, Head of Technical Analysis at Oppenheimer. On the 13th, we have Clint Cowles. He is the Senior Strategist at TD Ameritrade, educating institutional investors. I think that's a very important role. And then on the 14th, we'll have Jeff Huge from Alpha Insights. By the way, I know Jeff is a big fan of relative rotation graphs. So that's what's coming up next week. Now, we are going to see what markets have been doing. We just closed. The um, markets were opened up strongly, as you can see here in the little, uh, in the little widget here. Uh, S&P closed 0.8% higher. So we came off the highs and that goes for pretty much all the stock market indexes. We, we gapped higher and then we, we traded sideways and we, we ended the market slightly lower. We'll dive into that a little bit. Better later on. Nasdaq up 1%, NICE up 1%. The small caps up 1.5%. So that is actually better than the SP 500. So small and mid caps outperforming the SP 500 today. Uh, SP 100 up 80 bips and the Nasdaq 100.8.9. If we look at the bond market, those were up in general, only the long bonds were down. Uh, and that means actually that when you have the, uh, the long bonds going down and the shorter ones going up, that you will have um, uh, a steepening of the yield curve going on. We have time, we may bring up that chart. Commodities kind of mixed, the uh, precious metals lower, all the other ones higher. And then on crypto, the Bitcoin was going low. You see a mixed market. And I'll have a little bit of a surprise for you later on in terms of crypto. Now, when I was preparing for the show, I, I thought of how I was doing uh, my daily work when I was uh, back in the day uh, at, at institutions. And we would always read papers. You know, everybody was reading papers. In the dealing room, everybody was reading papers. What was the most 
most important page in the newspaper. You guess it. That's where the cartoons were. And I have a mark on my screen because we don't read a lot of papers anymore, do we? So um, every now and then I bring up the Alex cartoon. And I'm, <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's well known in the US, but it certainly is here in the Netherlands and in the UK because Alex is a very posh investment banker working for uh, the imaginary mega bank in London. And uh, I, just, I just couldn't resist doing this. So this is Alex and this is Penny, his wife. And she says, so Alex, you taunted all the drivers queuing for petrol by pointedly charging your electric car. Now you gotta know that right now in the UK, there is a big shortage of petrol for cars. There are actually uh, uh, traffic jams and queues for people who need to get petrol. Uh, and the army is being uh, used to actually um, uh, replenish the, the, the fuel to the stations. So Alex says, of course, Penny. And then she says, for you, an electric car is just a status symbol that allows you to engage in pretty games of one-upship one with other motorists. You should learn your lesson. That is not what switching to clean energy vehicle is all about. <sighs> You're probably right, Penny. I can't even rev this thing's engine up loudly to draw attention to myself. None of the losers in the queue even notice me as I'm driving triumphantly past them. Damn it, this Tesla was a waste of money. Anyway, I hope you like it. And if you go to the site, Alex Cartoon, you, it's funny, it's funny. Anyway, back to the markets. Um, my starting point is most of the time an ROG. So we've looked at, at all those markets here, different asset classes. I do that, I try to bring up or I bring up uh, an RRG showing a number of asset classes. Those of you who, who are watching Sector Spotlight may be familiar with this one. If you look at the daily, daily RRG, um, we can see the short term movements of those asset classes. And as you can see here, uh, the last few days for ITOT, that's the uh, overall stock market index, they were pretty good. It wasn't lagging and it's rotating back up. And you see its counterpart, government bonds uh, and corporate bonds and high yield are uh, rotating back down from leading and into the weakening quadrant. That is giving us a picture of um, a preference for stocks, at least in the near term over the last few days. If you look at the, um, the, out, the, the, the class that actually really stands out, that is commodities. And the, the ETFs that I track here are DJP and GSG. And you can see they are actually. Um, they're jumping out. If you look at the table here, they've gained 2.8 and 2.6% over the last five trading days. VBI and X is the benchmark, and that is uh, a 60, 40% benchmark, 60% in stocks, 40% in bonds. Now, if we bring that to uh, individual charts, and I want to bring up ACP, because uh, we can do this on candle glance, but we can also do it on ACP. And I thought it would be neat <coughs> to actually uh, use ACP for this, uh, for this occasion. And here you can see the, uh, the move of the S&P jumping higher at the open, moving sideways and then coming off. These, by the way, these are all hourly charts. So they give us uh, a picture of what's going on over the last 10 days. So it's good short term, but we can put it in relation to what's happened over the last few days. So now. Dow Jones, pretty much the same. NASDAQ, pretty much the same. NYSE, pretty much the same. But if you look at, um, for example, here, we, we see that small caps and mid caps were outperforming the S&P. Well, they did that today. But if you look at the um, uh, image for the last few days, then you can see that the S&P actually jumped higher over the highs than uh, small caps and mid caps did that. So. So today, small and mid caps were stronger, and I can show you an RRG where you can see that the trend is actually moving, but in the bigger picture, small and mid caps are still well uh, below the S&P in terms of performance. We go to, uh, to bonds, then I think that this is actually a pretty important chart here, and I'm gonna blow that up. I think this is a, a pretty crucial chart actually for what's going on in the markets right now, and, and it'll probably hold the keys for uh, some time to come, and you can see here that TLT, that's the 20 plus year treasury bond ETF, just broke below a consolidation. 
This is uh, adding to the narrative of government bonds breaking lower and pushing yields higher. And I'm not convinced that that is a good sign for the stock market. The 7 to 10 year is still uh, hovering above those levels. You can see here. So when those ETFs, those different maturities on the yield curve continue to break lower, it means that we're going to push the entire yield curve up. So all yields are going up and it's actually steepening. Those are things that stock markets really don't like. So we need to keep an eye on that because that could be um, the threat of the hood. Uh, that will that could that could be a threat on the short-term improvements that we've been seeing uh, over the last few days, actually. Now let's bring on uh, a few of the individual charts here. And what I then like to do is actually bring this one here to the right, and we can bring the S and P. I'm bringing my own charts here. Why did I not prepare that well enough? Okay. So here is SPY. And you can see this is my weekly chart. What I'm monitoring here is the drop of SPY from its long term trend channel. And what we see now is, in my opinion, a return back to the breakout level. Uh, we do need a lot more upside to actually get back in the swing of that longer term uptrend and it's even better visible when you go to the uh, to the daily s p chart here you can see uh, that we we actually gapped higher and if you look closely you can see that we actually closed the gap and that was the gap from the 28th of september so this is a series of lower highs and lower lows will be this one pretty marginally and you can see that we had a weak closing today. Um, so this is still one high, a lower high, and potentially another lower high. We've just closed that gap and we are, we are pushing against that old support line that we can now expect to, uh, to act as resistance. So I'm very closely watching that. I am not sure that this is the bottom that we're looking for. My longer term view is that we're still in a bull market. You look at longer term charts for all the sectors for all the for, for, for all the stock market indexes um those are all still pretty bullish but we have had such a massive rally and it looks as if we're now into a um let's call it more tactical reactive move for the s p 500. we're going to wrap up this segment here for an overview of market asset classes we're going to quickly go to a commercial break and after that, we're going to dive into some RRGs and sectors. And thank you for staying with me. Uh, we're back with the final bar for today. Um, as promised, we're going to look at some sectors and sector rotation. Now, I know that Dave uses sector rotation and RRGs quite regularly in his show. Um, one one uh, item that I want to address today, because I got, uh, I, actually today again, I got a question asked on how these RRGs are updating. And uh, people who watch me more often know that I'm talking about weekly and daily RRGs and I'm trying to, uh, to combine them and see if, if anything aligns. And, and someone said it's, uh, it's a pity that the weekly RRGs uh, can only be drawn after the week has closed. Uh, and this person thought that they were not updating throughout the week or throughout the day. <clears throat> Truth is, they do. Both the daily and the weekly RRGs are updated throughout the trading day up to the last observation. The only thing is that the last, I call it the last segment of an RRG, that is fluid. So if we look at, this is probably the best 
an uh, example here, the tail on XLE, because it's very well visible and it's got a last, a long, big last segment. Um, this, this little dot here where my pointer is, that is last Friday. On Monday opening, this tail would have a new dot. And that dot will move based on the new prices that are coming in until tomorrow's close. So from Monday opening to Friday's close, this last dot on the RRG is fluid. It will move. And um, the moves are not that big, so, so you won't really see it. It's also, it's not streaming, so you actually need to refresh the RRG to see any new updates. But they will be hardly visible because this is long term and this is picking up the longer term moves. But they are updating. And the same goes for the daily RRG. If we switch that to the daily RRG, <clears throat> then you will notice that now the market is closed. So this last dot is now final. That's now graved in stone. And the previous one was yesterday's close. When the market opens tomorrow on Friday, you will see a new dot. And during the day, that dot will be fluid. Again, it, it will not make massive swings because the, that's not how it's designed. But you can check it when you, let's say, 10 minutes after the market opens, you, you uh, run an RRG and you look at the prices and then you leave that chart on for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And after 10, 15 minutes, you'll look again and you refresh it. You can just refresh it by updating the chart and then look at the prices. You will notice that these prices have changed and those prices are reflected reflected on the tails on the RRG. So everybody who thought that those RRGs were not updating through the day or through the week, they are. Both the, the daily and the weekly RRGs are up to date uh, when the market is open and when stock charts has real-time data coming in. So there are uh, certain mutual funds, certain indexes uh, where we don't have real-time data. So obviously they will be end of day, but all the other stuff, is right up to date. Now, the rotations that we have seen, the obviously the energy tail uh, way up inside the leading quadrant, um, uh, big moves, another, another very good day again. So here you see uh, the, the five day moves. I can make that, it's the final bar. So we do a one -day move and we can see where that was. So discretionary actually up 1.6%. And where is that energy? here up 80 bips still pretty good off the highs of yesterday but way up in the leading quadrant strong relative strength over the last uh period now the one that i think is and i'm going to bring it back to five days because i i'd like to see the rotation i'd like to see where it's going one of the tales that actually caught me um caught my eye recently is uh is the financial sector financial sector doing really really well and you can see that on the rrg uh, and also on the weekly RRG, you will see the tail of, of XLF uh, pushing uh, strongly higher and towards the leading quadrant at a strong RRG heading. So we need to keep an eye on that. Uh, and I'm not a fundamental analyst, but rising rates and steepening yield curves, I've been taught, are good for financial stocks. So that's a sector that you may want to keep an eye on, uh, despite the fact that the general market may be under pressure, that financial sector could be doing quite well. Um, we need to talk about three and three. We're going to do that later. I'm going to take a little bit more time uh, for that. Let's look at the uh, material sector. Materials here, that's a very nice tail moving into the leading quadrant. On the price chart, we are resting at support. This is weekly support and on the relative strength, you can see that this is the weekly version of that chart. Let me bring in the weekly tail and bring up XLB for you. You can see that it is inside lagging and picking up. So the big question is whether that daily strength for XLB will be strong enough to pull this one further up and higher. <clears throat> same goes for financials, same goes for industrials. Now the the next level thing that uh, I, I very often do, and I think you might be interested in, is 
dive a little bit deeper into those sectors. And we can actually do that from the home page, from the dashboard. If you, if you go to your dashboard, I'm not sure how you've arranged it, but I always have uh, the sector summary up there. And you can actually dive into one level deeper and go to the sector summary page. And we need to make that a little bit higher. If you bring up that table, you will see a small icon with four quadrants. That's the RRG icon. Now, let's stick with um, financials. If we have financials, you're here and you click on the RRG icon, it will bring up the groups that are inside the financial sector. So not the individual stocks, but the groups that are inside the financial sector. Now, these are now benchmarked against the S&P 500, and they're all showing overall a pretty strong uh, heading, which is to be expected with the sector itself inside the leading quadrant. But if we bring this to or make the benchmark the financial sector, you actually get a different picture. So now we have all these groups and they are now benchmarked against the financial sector. Let me bring this to a weekly so we're talking the same things. So here you see the financial sector, as I said, insight improving at a nice strong heading, moving towards the leading quadrant. And these are the groups that make up that sector. And this allows us to actually go one level deeper into that financial sector and see which groups are actually potentially interesting going forward. <coughs> and we go into those groups and the way I do it, is I hold down my control key and with the arrows, I can toggle through the list. And here is the full line insurance. This one has my attention as it is uh, traveling at a strong ROG heading further into the leading quadrant. XLF is actually now the benchmark. You see uh, mortgage finance, and here is US banks. So we have banks and full line insurance at a nice heading. We got IL, that's life insurance, not as strong, but pretty good. We got special finance. Uh, it's, it's, it has been strong, but it's now coming out of that leading quadrant and moving into weakening. So it's still a strong relative strength. <coughs> Sorry. Um, but losing some relative strength. So that's probably uh, a little correction inside the longer term uptrend. We've got asset managers doing relatively the same. We've got the same for investment services. And then we've got the weak stuff, which is consumer finance, financial administration, reinsurance. And this one here, that is casualty insurance. So these red groups, casualty insurance, utility, financial administration, and this was consumer finance. I think those are probably better avoided going forward. So where in financials, if you believe that financials will outperform, which groups should we focus on? I think the full line insurance and the banks are probably the most interesting groups inside the financial sector. Now, in the next step would be to find individual banks and, indiv and, and individual full line insurance stocks and, and pick whatever you like for your portfolio. Now, the last segment that I want to do with you guys is the three and three. We've got a few minutes left. Um, so it's going to be <coughs> probably three and seven or three and six. And the reason for that is because I want to show you how I am going to pick the three stocks that I want to talk about in my three and three. And I thought it was a good idea to, uh, to take the good old Dow Industrials 30 index. <coughs> I've got a frog in my throat. Sorry about that, guys. So here is the RRG showing the 30 members of the Dow Jones Industrial. Nicely spread out because it's a closed universe. All stocks are inside the index. So it doesn't matter what the index is doing. We will still be able to find the, uh, the best and the worst or, or the best and not so good stocks inside that index. 
So this is the starting point. And we're going to do the same as I did, just did with the groups uh, on the right hand side for financials and go over all these individual names. And what you'll see that here, this one is interesting. That's Goldman Sachs. It's a financial stock rotating back towards the leading quadrant at one in the financial sector. <clears throat> and we had already established that the financial sector was doing pretty well recently. So here's Apple going rapidly lower from the leading quadrant and almost guaranteed to move into the weakening quadrant tomorrow or early next week. We got Cisco making a sort of similar move with less power than Apple. Here is JP Morgan moving at a very nice strong heading, powering into the leading quadrant. That's another financial stock showing a lot of strength. And we got Procter & Gamble going lower. We got Travelers, another financial stock moving into the leading quadrant. So that financial stock, and these are the, the mega caps. These are the real big stocks inside that financial sector moving into the leading quadrant. But Walmart, McDonald's actually, uh, not a long tail, but on the right hand side, short tail. And that means that it is a relative, uh, a stable relative uptrend versus the Dow Jones Industrials. And if we see the rotation over the last few days, weeks, we can see that it's actually rotating back up. The last few days were actually pretty strong for McDonald's. So Dan, and here we see Merck making a, um, uh, a nice hook back up. If you look at the rotation here, you can see that it weakened and then all of a sudden we got that hook back up. So uh, Merck is definitely one of the ones that I want to talk about. So was McDonald's and so was JP Morgan. And here are the rest which are still far away to the left. So I didn't want to uh, go about them. So my three stocks, three and three, JP Morgan, Merck and McDonald's. Let's bring them up on the chart. So um, JPM, <clears throat> why is that strong? It's breaking out to new highs with relative strength picking up and the ROG lines about to break above both the uh, lines above the 100 line, pushing it into the leading quadrant. That is a good thing. And this is one of the few stocks that's actually breaking to new highs already. The second one that we're going to talk about is Merck. And obviously that has everything to do with the news about COVID not vaccination, but cures, etc. It bounced off an important resistance level, that former high that was late 2019. But we got out of that big triangle consolidation, and it looks as if we're bottoming out in terms of relative strength. If this can continue, if Merck can push next week, probably above 84, then this is one of the more interesting stocks inside the healthcare sector and the pharmaceuticals group. And then finally, the last one is, as I said, McDonald's. And this one is also breaking two new highs and that's happening after a pretty long winded downtrend in terms of relative strength. So we're looking for a bottom in relative strength, both ROG lines pushing above 100 in, uh, shortly, while price is already pushing to new highs. I think that is uh, a positive cocktail for McDonald's going higher um, in the next few days. We got to wrap this up, guys. Thank you so much for staying with me. Uh, next week, Dave will be back. Tomorrow, it'll be Tom Bowley. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like me to talk about next week. And I sure hope you'll have a very good weekend. Thank you very much. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.